you all know what I work on a lot is a lot of produce storage sheds and a lot of times it's large drive-in rooms that uh, are on a circuit on an E2 controller like this controller right here has actually three rooms one's a dock there's room one and then room two but then each one of these rooms uh, has five circuits to it five air coolers with a solenoid valve no e EPRs no electronic EPRs or EPRs so it's just cycling on and off the solenoid valve um, at each air cooler and uh, I've been wanting to float the suction set point on these places for quite a while but the thing of it is the managers or the people they change the produce um, that is stored in each room so they'll have different set points depending on what season it is and so they'll come and change room set points and I can't just use one particular circuit for a the lead float the lead circuit on the float on the suction group so I've been racking my brain and I had some help from a couple guys that know how to do flexible combiners on these and uh, got something figured out here So what I've been trying to figure out is a way to automatically make the Z2 select whichever circuit has the lowest set point at any given time and choose that as the set point for the, the float circuit that I have set as the suction group lead float or lead circuit and I couldn't figure out a way to make it all automatic but I got some help and I'm going to kind of show you guys what I had to do make it work I had to make a flexible combiner on this particular system since I've got five circuits in each one of these rooms it was a little different than a couple other facilities that I do so for a while before we figured this out um, I always had the enable float set to no so we always just had a constant suction pressure no matter what the room temperatures were and it ran okay that way but that's and we're looking for efficiency and that's not the most efficient way so now I've got this thing set up to where it's um, float is enabled and lead float is my float circuit which is just a dummy circuit which with nothing it doesn't control any solenoid valves or anything it just monitors temperature but I had to set the inputs of that circuit as the outputs of my flexible flexible combiners here's my real circuits and here's my dummy circuit float circuit and so here's the setup of my float circuit uh, just a, got it, gave it the name and the set point is not just a regular set point but it's the, the analog memory one of my flexible combiner so that, automatically gives it a set point and then the input the, the case temperature input is the output of analog memory 2 of the flex flex combiner so so here's what the flexible combiner looks like um, I've already got it all input uh, it's calculating doing its thing um, I've got four analog inputs and then I've got two, yeah, two of them are the set points and then two of them are the uh, temperature inputs. On this one, I wanted to take an average of each room and have as the temp input to send out to the float circuit. So what you're seeing here is the active set point of one of the circuits, which they always change all five of them at the same time. So each room is gonna have just one set point. They're all five the same. So I've got room one set points at 50, room two set points at 44. So I wanted to choose, I want the flexible combiner to choose the lowest set point and then the temperature input that goes along with that room. And so here's a little run through of the screens of the setup for the flexible combiner. That's the general, so I've got update rates at five seconds, analog inputs at, I've got four analog inputs, 
two analog outputs, no digital inputs, two digital outputs, and two analog memories. And then the inputs, of course, so those are the active set points of those two rooms, the first circuit of each room, because they're all, like I said, all five the same. And then the average temp of each room for the other, other two inputs. So then the outputs, are going and the analog memory is going to the float circuit case temp input and then the, the set point and then the, in, the case temp one so here are the equations units are all degrees Fahrenheit on this type of thing. I didn't put any description in there. So in order to get the analog input of the, for the average temp of each room, I had to make a couple of analog combiners. I'll show you that here in a second. So I'm going to go over here to configured applications. when the manager wants to change product in the room. I mean, this room two, he's got it at 44 right now for whatever product that is. So he can, I've got it set to where if he changes the first circuit 1A in that room, it changes all five at the same time. So like he'll go to set up and then he'll go to change the set point of this room. Then he wants to put it at say, I don't know, 54 degrees. Where was that? 44. And that was the lowest. So he changes it to 54 degrees. These are going to change to 54. And then this float circuit down here is going to change to 50 because that's the lowest. Okay, I changed 50. These change to 54. Pretty sweet. Works like a champ. So then that, now the suction loop will float up to 50 degrees instead of 54 degrees. So I don't have to worry about coming in here and the float. The lead float is all in the out for the wrong circuit, it's not the coldest one, and it messes everything up, it messes up the suction set point and everything, it doesn't work right. So that's what I got figured out. Thanks to Kevin Compass, helped me out with that. 